Hello and welcome everyone to this demo session on SAP Cloud Platform Training. The new name of SAP Cloud Platform is SAP Business Technology Platform. In this series of videos, we are discussing what is SAP Cloud Foundry and an introduction to SAP Cloud Application Programming Model. For the detailed training on SAP Cloud Platform and Cloud Foundry, feel free to subscribe our training on anubavtrainings.com. So our today's uh, session on this mini session is about what is SAP Cloud Foundry. So most of the sessions we will go ahead at whiteboard presentation rather than typical slide based presentation. So let's get started and discuss the same. So what is SAP Cloud Foundry? Many of you have approached me asking introduction of what is Cloud Foundry and why it is getting so much popularity and why is most of the companies are slowly developing their applications on Cloud Platform or Cloud Foundry. So let's understand what exactly SAP Cloud Foundry or Cloud Foundry is all about in general. So just think of a developer. Maybe you are working as a developer in a company and when you want to start developing an application, you would basically use some programming language. Now this programming language, something which you would have learned in the past, uh, maybe you would have learned in the academics or you would have learned in industry. Now there are so many programming languages which these days are very popular like for example Java or ABAP or for example Node.js. Yeah. Now some of these programming languages you already have experience into. Now if you want to start developing any applications the very first and fundamental thing you would need is a hardware. Now a hardware is nothing but a computer and for the modern programming languages Sometimes you would need a very good computer with good amount of memory and good size of hard disk to speed up your processing. At the same time, you would also need on top of this hardware the basic operating system. Now, perhaps you would like to develop on one operating system and wanted to test your code in different different operating systems. Then next you would need is the basic softwares including networking. Yeah. So all of these you would need as a bare minimum requirement before you start development. Then on top of that you would start first thing as a database. So you would need a database to keep all the data. Then on top you would need the runtime support. Runtime includes different programming runtime. For example, you cannot go and run a C program in notepad file. You need C compiler. That's the runtime. Similarly for Java. The runtime is, is uh, called GRE, Java Runtime Environment. For ABAP, it is SAP NetVivo platform. And then for Node.js, it is Google's V8 engine. So these are all the different runtimes you would need for different programming languages. Then on top, you would need additional programming services like a queue mechanism. You would need different tools to develop applications. So all of that you would need it to install in your system locally to be able to start development. Then you would also need some backing services, backing services like different services which will help you to improve the developer efficiency, right? You would need different tools to basically do a continuous deployment of your applications to the target system. And also a lot of lean checks and different checks and syntax check tools. Also source code organization, you would need different tools there. So these are all the development infrastructure you would typically need. And finally, after arranging all of these, you would start developing. And that's where you will have a, a data models. Yes. And then you will have your application and services. So you will develop services these days for web applications. And then finally, you will have your entire application UI. So all of this is the main part which a developer directly mainly work on. And rest all the things are kind of one time set up or a kind of setup which you want to do when you want to test on different different environments. Now, what if we say that all of this you can rent out on internet? Yes, you don't need a to buy probably a machine with one gigs of RAM by paying like 600 or 800 dollars of RAM price. Maybe you can go to a, a, a company, a vendor, and say, hey, I want to rent out all of this from uh, maybe like a dollar or so per day. Yeah, so I don't have an upfront investment to be done. And tomorrow, if I want to need more memory, if I want to use more RAM 
or more hard disk or more computation power, then I can scale up by paying an extra dollar a day. So that's the benefit you get when you rent it out. So there is low TCU, lower TCU at the beginning. You also can scale very fast. You can scale up or scale down at the same time. Suppose you don't want it to uh, have that much of a RAM, you would perhaps want to uh, scale it down to, to save some cost. You can go out and choose a variety of options. You have different options to choose uh, for different operating systems. So you have complete flexibility out there on the internet when you're renting out such a machine on the internet. And that's what is called infrastructure as a service. So infrastructure as a service on the internet is basically renting out a computer with computing resources, including networking, hardware, basic security, and operating systems. And there are a lot of players out there in market, like you might have heard about AWS, Amazon, AWS, then you might have heard about Google Cloud, then you have uh, Azure, Microsoft Azure, then you have Azure Cloud. So there are a lot of players, they are infrastructure providers. You can go to them, you can quickly rent out a computer from them, and it can start at a very cheaper plan, depending on the, size of the computing units or size of the RAM you would need in your computer resources. So that's a very first thing you can get started. And then at the same time, if I say you can also rent out all of this and get that pre-configured on top of IaaS as a service, and that's called platform as a service. So platform as a service is where a developer or a, a company who would like to go into cloud, who would want to develop applications in the cloud, can perhaps rent out a platform as a service by paying a small subscription fee. On top of it, they can choose which region, which infrastructure provider they want to go with. That's a flexibility, they get it. And then they can get everything up and running. And they can also scale up and scale down. They can choose from different services. For example, on database side, I want to use PostgreSQL, or I want to use HANA database or perhaps I wanted to use runtime for Node.js only, and I want to use UI5. So in that case, I have a full flexibility to choose my a la carte plan and decide what services I would want to use in terms of my, my design, development, and management of an entire life cycle of an application. So all of these, you get it out of the box with platform as a service, and that's where Pivotal have done a magic they've got a something called platform as a service a standard implementation, which is known as Cloud Foundry. So Cloud Foundry is a pivotal product, and it provides you a standard way of implementing a platform as a service. What SAP have done is they have extended the standard SAP Cloud Foundry, and they have got an SAP Cloud Foundry, Cloud Platform, which is now known as SAP BTP, Business Technology Platform. So now what exactly you get with the benefit of SAP BTP? SAP BTP in extension of Cloud Foundry, which is from Pivotal, and it allows you a platform as a service where companies can onboard their developers quickly and easily without spending too much of hardware or setup costs or without worrying about it. And then you can run your application directly on cloud, which means on the internet. And the, the setup is pretty easy and you can you have variety of options of tools. You can do development using local tools or, or, or in Visual Studio Code. You can use different pre-built services, different runtimes options, use different databases. So you really don't have to go into doing this setup in all the different different developers work machines. Their work machines can be a lightweight work machine with simple four gigabytes of RAM, but at the same time, they can really build very big and powerful applications into this platform and deploy and manage fully on this platform. And hey, you get also scalability elasticity options, and that's what called SAP Business Technology Platform with Cloud Foundry. Making sense? Now, finally, as a developer, you just have to focus on building your application. And for building applications, as you know, uh, there are a lot of people who not uh, necessarily know about programming. People with Java, people with Node.js programming experiences from other industry experts can also build on it. So that's where you have different options to build variety of applications. So you can build apps. And these are known as uh, software as a service. So SAP Cloud Platform or SAP Business Technology Platform is a platform as a service for developers and development teams 
to allow them to build applications which can run as a service which can be offered as a service to their customers so you can fully building it on internet applications internet enabled application the main advantage of sap cloud platform or btp is also integration so you get a very good integration capability with your existing systems like you can have an existing on premise system be it ecc or sap s4 hana or you can have a cloud system like success factor field glass conquer ariba a lot of different uh, systems you can have perhaps in your company and you get complete integration capability also you get also enterprise messaging service through which you can exchange messages trigger events for example a sales order in s4 hana when it's created i would want to uh, create an entry on my application and in my database automatically yeah so this kind of capabilities you can build and this way you can build applications which remains outside your s4 hana system without disrupting anything within your system keeping your system clean yet developing applications connected to this s4 hana system which is what we call it as side by side extension application so you can learn, build side by side extension applications you can build complete native cloud applications where you have no connection to the existing systems no data exchange yet you can have a full fledged application running on to the cloud with a scalability option and accessible over the internet which has also lot of features like you can man manage security using your custom identity provider you have different components and backing services different run times like python Node.js, Java, Golang. So you have different runtimes options to choose different databases like HANA, HDI, or you can go with PostgreSQL, SQLite. So whole bunch of options are available for you. So I hope you enjoyed this session of introduction of SAP Cloud Foundry. In our next episode, we're going to learn how to start your free trial account with SAP Cloud Foundry with SAP Business Technology Platform, and then onboard yourself. To the first development tool so just to brief you about what is what are the different options we have in terms of tool in cloud foundry we get business application studio you can use local development using vs code you get source code management using git repository you have different run times like java node.js you can use different frameworks like express for node.js spring boot sap ui5 framework for front-end development sap capm cloud application programming model sap wrap as for about programming model different databases to choose from like hdi sqlite postgresql and then we have different other options like you can reuse for integration purpose cloud sdk for javascript and then you can use docker then you can use jenkins for continuous innovation continuous delivery the ci cd pipelines you can use yeoman for scaffolding template all of this we are going to cover in our one single training called SAP BDB training. So if you're interested to learn complete whole bunch of these stuff, please feel free to subscribe our training on BTP on anubhavtrainings.com. With that, I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next episode and goodbye.